Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to cover cover some important terminologies that are associated with uh, ship construction and naval architect. So when we talk about ship uh, ship construction and terminologies, first one uh, you will find that in uh, whatever terminology that we discuss, I try to cover it the maximum. Whatever we um, see today, one or the other question would definitely be asked in exam. So first one is a camber and uh, its the other name is round of beam. So it's the curvature of the deck in a transverse direction. It is measured between deck height at the center and the deck height at side. Okay, basically in the amidship position. So how much height we have in the center and how much height we have in the side. So there is a difference and that difference is known as camber. Okay, so at the mid amidship you have height maximum sides you have minimum now some of the features when we talk about it is measured in mm while all other ship dimensions are measured in meter it is fixed amidship okay one and it is 150th of the breadth of the ship now when we talk about uh, why it is provided the purpose then the purpose is to facilitate drainage of water we have water accumulation because if it is flat or if it is it has a curvature in the uh, mid itself then what will happen there will lo a lot of water that will accumulate then you will have problem of draining the water so that's the reason why we have water because of to facilitate water drainage that is provided when you walk on the road also uh, highways and all so you find the uh, the highways too they have this camber camber on road increase the resistance of deflection under load standard camber is parabolic and approximately 150th of the breadth of the ship as we already discussed modern ships have dog log camber where they are level across the deck between the hatches and drooping in a straight line to the deck at side the upper deck where to uh, where to be constructed flat the humps and hollows that occur due to welding distortion would delay complete drainage okay so there are distortion that will happen so if we if we talk about the diagram so you see here the camber so it is amidship so this is the height the difference of height at the side and at the amidship so this is calculated this is the difference and that is known as camber you also see here dumbbell home that the, that is the inward curvature we'll be discussing in uh, further this is freeboard this is your um, uh, deck height at the side and this is the draft and then you have the difference of the two is the freeboard here you see the rise of the floor okay, this is the keel the perpendicular donut the keel okay so uh, we move on we see the rise of the floor the distance above the keel that a tangent to the bottom or at or near the keel cuts the line of maximum beam amidship a rise of the keel is also known as dead rise the bottom shell of the ship is sometimes sloped up from the keel to the bilge to facilitate drainage now because of this portion you will have drainage because generally we have inside these places you will find the bilge bilge wells okay so if it is sloped then easily all the water or the oily mixture whatever it is that will easily go to the well the rise of the floor is small 150 mm being usual okay that was the camber was 150th of the breadth it is 150 mm maximum now when we talk about tumble home uh, you see here this tumble rod this is inward curvature above the always remember above the mean draft okay draft ke upar hona chahi. this is tumble home okay so in in ship the narrowing of midships side shell in the region of the upper deck is curved slightly towards the center line thus reducing the width of the upper deck and deck above it improves the appearance of the ship now when we talk about freeboard freeboard we have already seen the vertical distance from the water line to the top edge of the deck plating at the side of the deck amidship freeboard represents the safety margin showing to what depth the ship may be loaded under various safety conditions 
what we have uh, you can say what how much we still we can load okay example the type of cargo the water to be navigated the season of all the year purpose of free boat ensure that load on the ship cannot be beyond her strength okay to give the sufficient reserve buoyancy so we need to have some reserve buoyancy to keep the deck high enough from wearer to enable the crew to navigate and handle her all weather condition okay bills ready that's the reason why you see that tankers they have lesser freeboard as compared to aurora vessels so hardly you will find there are cases of piracy pirate attacks on aurora vessel the reason being is that their freeboard is much much higher so it is very difficult to for the pirates to climb on aurora vessels now we talk about bilge radius the radius of the r connecting the side of the ship to the bottom at the midship portion of the ship okay so that is bilge radius now when we talk about shear it is very important the curvature of the deck in a forward and the aft direction rising from the midship to a maximum at the ends the shear forward is usually twice that aft shear okay shear on exposed deck makes a ship more seaworthy by raising the deck at the fore and after ends further from the water and by reducing the volume of water coming to the on the deck now you see here i'll show you by the diagram this is the shear this is forward shear and this is after shear okay now we go and the curvature of the deck in a forward and aft direction so there is a curvature there is a upward curvature that is given Uh, to the deck in forward and aft direction, rising from the midship to a maximum at the ends. So from the midship, you see, from midship that it is, it is start starts. Okay, then at the end it is maximum. The shear forward is usually twice that after shear. So it is you can see they are double in length. Shear forward is double to that of the after shear. a uh, shear on exposed deck makes a ship more seaworthy by raising the deck at the fore and after ends further from the water and by reducing the volume of water coming on the deck so uh, there are chances that on the aft portion and the forward portion the water may come on the deck now because we have raised uh, uh, because this continuously pitches into the water there is a continuous pitching in bad weather so there are chances that water will come on the deck so to avoid that situation we have this shear in the both uh, the case now this is perpendicular you see here uh, the forward perpendicular this is the after perpendicular now when we talk about forward per perpendicular if a perpendicular is drawn at the point where the bow intersects the water line there's a bow okay this the bow intersects the water line so this perpendicular that is drawn the bow portion that interacts the water line this imaginary perpendicular line is called the forward perpendicular for most of the hydrostatic calculation the forward perpendicular is used as the forward reference of the hull so we don't take this the length overhaul line we take forward perpendicular for all the references aft perpendicular depending on the designer the aft perpendicular can be the perpendicular drawn through the aft side of the rudder post now this you see uh, see the line here you will have rudder here you will have propeller so uh, rudder post the perpendicular drawn the imaginary it will be a imaginary line there is no as such line it will be an imaginary line so to the aft side of the rudder post or to the center line of the rudder pintles so we have pintles in the rudder Uh, we have already covered uh, types of rudder and rudder drop and all those phenomena rudder checks in a separate video you can watch that the aft perpendicular is the aft reference line for all hydrostatic calculation the aft for all hydrostatic calculation whatever the problem that we are solving in naval architect all those problems are associated with this aft perpendicular we take it to be the reference okay now length between perpendiculars so there is a length between per both the perpendiculars so that is known as length between perpendiculars the length between the forward and the aft perpendicular is the length between perpendiculars the lbp is very length between perpendicular is very important parameter in all stability calculation hence calculation of the lbp at various drafts becomes an important step in carrying out stability analysis 
so uh, length between perpendicular it is very important as point of view of a uh, stability now we have bilge strike strike at the turn of the bilge the strike at the turn of the bilge extending outward to a point where the side rises vertically so there is a side which rises vertically that is known as bilge strike so that strike uh, uh, at the point of rise of floor where we had discussed so at that point of rise strike we'll have bilge strikes well, now what are strikes that is garboard strike okay so these strikes there are garboard strikes uh, there are shear strikes so we'll be covering that later as now we see the stellar strike number of adjacent strikes fitted at the end of the ship a single wide plate which replaces two narrow plates in adjacent strike of a ship now when we talk about a shell plating now you see what the function of a cell plating would be to provide watertight skin to the ship structure so from whatever from externally the hull form that you see it is basically the shell plating you see a ship floating from the land in the water from outside whatever you see the hull form so that is that provides a watertight integrity so that watertight integrity is shell plating nothing but shell plating now this shell plating contributes to the longitudinal strength now they also contribute to the longitudinal strength of the ship because it is one or the other way it is in longitudinal uh, way now these shell platings can be divided into two side shell plating and we have bottom shell plating we also have deck shell plating so that is uh, uh, not as such you can take it in other way so we have in shy, uh, side shell plating we have shear strike other strikes on the side shell plating and we have in bottom shell plating we have garboard strike and we have keel strike plus other strike on bottom shell plating okay so here in bottom shell plating the uppermost bottom shell plating would be garboard strike okay now the keel strike that you know only okay so we'll go and see each one individually now garboard strike strike adjacent to the keel on each side of the ship so now the adjacent strike to the keel okay leave the keel keel in itself is a design so when we talk about keel then we talk about the keel strike so keel as a one entity and then the strike that is connected adjacent to the uh, shear strike that is uh, sorry keel strike that is known as garboard strike now it strike is the first strike on each side of the keel strike in the bottom strike the first strike from the keel is named as a strike now when we talk about the numbering of the strike in shell expansion plan that we that also i'm going to cover later on so there you see now the numbering is done from stern to the forward okay from the aft to the forward so from aft when you start then aft we name it as a b c d and so on move till the forward and then again from upper direction that we go on that is in uh, from bottom to top okay so now uh, first strike on each side of the cell in the bottom strike the first strike of the keel is named as a strike so we can also say that bottom a strike is called garboard strike okay so the bottom most strike that will be garboard strike so the numbering would be uh, sorry the numbering would be that a from stern to forward that is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 okay and from um, bottom to top that will be a now we have covered a1 a a1 to an in in this direction aft to forward and now we are going from uh, bottom to top that is a b c and so on okay now for the box shape uh, shape the naming of strake might look simple but for actual ship with curved uh, sides or flared bottom it might not be that simple okay the naming and construction of side and the bottom shell plating is provided in the shell expansion plan that i already told you and we'll be discussing shear strike and what is the important importance of shear strike it is the largest continuous strike at the top of the side of the vessel main deck it is so the topmost strike on the side of the on, on the side shell plating that is known as shear strike and it is it is connected to the main deck or uppermost strike plating which meets up the upper deck it is 10 to 20 percent thicker than other shell plating okay importance when vessel is bending to forces from tension to compression and shear strike is subjected to maximum compressive and tensile strength 
so we have maximum compressive and tensile strength stresses on ship that is a separate part of thing we'll be covering in a separate video what is con uh, which is contribute to the strength of the hull now this being the thickest plate it contributes to the um, hull of the uh, strength of the ship strangers when we talk about they are used to strengthen the side surface of the ship called without stranger hull shape does not form without uh, strangers that hull form does not form now coffin plate that is very important it was asked a uh, couple of times used to connect stern frame to the flat plate keel stern frame to the flat plate keel gives it a coffin like look okay that is the reason even this was also asked that why it is known as coffin plate it is so called because in ancient time when ships were made of wood it gave us a shape of coffin margin plate at bilges the tank top may be either continuous straight out to the shell by means of tank margin plate which is water tight and set at an angle of 45 degree to the tank top and meeting the shell almost at a right angle that is known as margin plate when we talk about bulwark you see here it is a safety for the crew nothing else on the sides you have a wall like thing you have a railing like thing that is known as bulwark you have see here only you see scrappers this is gunwale okay this is gunwale this is bulwark and this is scrapper it is a solid wall that extends above the weather deck or any other deck to exposed to weather and fitted for the safety of the crew at least 1 meter in height this is at least 1 meter in height spacing of stays and is not exceeded 1.2 meter on the forecastle that the forecastle where we have 1.2 meter otherwise it is 1 meter already now gunwale we have already seen now we we'll look at the definition the upper edge of the ship side where the shear strake meets the deck plating now it is the only portion where it will shear strake will meet the deck plating it is called gunwale why it is called because in olden times there were warships there were ships they used to uh, protect themselves the maximum trading used to, so they used to have they used to keep their gun over here so that is known as, that's why it's known as gunwale now when we now the margin lines so very important it was asked to me only a line drawn at least 76 mm below the upper surface so it is a, this is also an imaginary line whatever we talked about aft perpendicular forward perpendicular length overall length between perpendiculars they all were imaginary line so same way margin line is also an imaginary line it is 76 mm below the upper surface of the bulkhead deck at side it is the um, which is drawn it denotes the limit up to which ship can be flooded so significance can also be asked so uh, what is the significance of margin line so it denotes the limit up to which ship can be flooded loaded without sinking without sinking after this it will sink for a ship which has a continuous bulkhead deck the margin line is to be taken as a line drawn not less than 76 mm below the upper deck of the bulkheads side except that where there is a variation in the thickness of the bulkhead deck at the side the surf upper surface of the deck should be taken at least thickness of deck at side above the deck if desired however the upper surface of the deck may be taken at the mean thickness okay mean thickness of the deck at which above the beam is calculated for the whole length of the deck provided that the thickness is no greater than least thickness plus 50 mm now you see here this is there and this is the margin line that you are seeing now buttock lines it is equidistant transverse section line from the midship of forward of the ship such that they give you the cross section area at various station at all possible draft and trim at all possible draft and trim they you give you the cross sectional view and area they are mainly used for knowing the lightweight displacement at time of end of the construction phase of the ship at the time of the end of the construction phase of the ship by this buttock lines you know you calculate the area and whatever the light the displacement lightweight displacement simpson's rules we apply uh, here keel strake that we discussed their keel strake keel plate is also made up of smaller section of steel plates these strakes of plates that form the keel of the ship is called keel strake 
okay the plate in the keel strake are number from aft to forward same way at as per the side shell plating starting from aft one which has a number one okay unlike other stray keel strake do not have letter associated with its naming so uh, in side shell plating we also we saw that it has number associated with it from bottom to top number and from aft to forward that is no, um, sorry the letters from aft to forward that is numbers and from bottom to top that are letters shell expansion plan to it is a 2d drawing of 3d hull form damage can be exactly located at which point the damage is there simpson's rules are applied vertical and horizontal scales are different in this this is a you see shell expansion plan now doubler plate when we talk about doubler plate is very these two are very important ones a small piece of plate attached to a larger area of plate that requires strengthening in that location so that requires strengthening in that location so basically wherever there is something and you need to have a welding so you what you do you have a extra plate and then you weld at that surface so that plate that you are welding that is known as doubler plate a flat plate welded to a plated surface that has suffered a damage striker plate uh, this is very important and once the trainees all should know because we always take sounding a plate installed in a storage tank at a point directly beneath the drop tube or gauging port now the plate that we have directly below the gauging port there is a thick plate is there now they absorb the impact of repeated insertion of gauge stick so we have sounding bob that is going and striking the tank so you can imagine one time you may not see that um, usual effect but throughout years and years so tank will have damage in absence of it there will be corrosion okay because the pitting will form so we can have pitting corrosion so then we'll have structural failure as well so this is very important striker plates and doubler plates so throughout this uh, we saw camber uh, we saw tumble home that was a outward curvature when we talk about tumble home we also talk about the flare aspect that i guess i missed one in here the flare uh, tumble home was inward curvature at the same time the flare is the outward curvature of the side shell above the water line it promotes dryness and therefore is associated with the fore end of the shell in forward part we have this flare portion because which promotes dryness it's outward curvature okay so we discussed about the camber tumble home rise of the floor aft perpendicular forward perpendicular shear stray garboard stray shell plating doubler plate striker plate shell expansion plan buttocks line all those things so uh, if if we have missed anything you can have a comment so that we can cover it in the next portion thank you